Now, hey guys, welcome back to another Swiss 01 video. Yeah, welcome back to Flight Simulator Fun with Swiss 01. Right now, we are on board at 737, and right now, we are approaching the airport of Los Angeles, LAX, you know, which I always like to call Lax Airport. I don't know, it's. It's not particularly, f it's just lax or whatever. Today we're in a 737-800, um, which is um, a good plane. And right now it is in the approach mode, meaning that it's actually being flown by the autopilot completely. And as you can see, we're coming in very close for landing. Actually, we are at a very high speed right now, 240 knots. Oh, that might be wrong. Well, I don't know, the autopilot's actually managing the speed as well. So uh, it's, it's not my fault, definitely. But what the autopilot here that is implemented into this plane is going to do is actually do a full on landing. Yes, it's probably gonna manage to touch down as well, which it is not mentioning very well. And oh, that's been very bad. All right, now the autopilot has turned itself off. Now that's a way to go as well. And we have officially crashed. Um, yeah, that's an interesting introduction into the video indeed. Yeah, we have definitely crashed now. Um, yeah, this is uh, quite ironic that we're now in a Reiner livery then. Uh, but yeah, that's a whole nother story. Now, <laughs> why are we here? Just to suffer. No. Now, Captain Joe posted this video quite recently where he uh, explained pilot stuff. No, he was actually talking about the top 15 reasons for hard landings. Uh, don't blame the first officer. Wow, that's he's only saying that because he's a first officer. Uh, but no, um, he <laughs> named some reasons why there are hard landings. And the one of the reasons he named was actually the autopilot landing the plane. Pilots have to choose an autoland landing. If there we go. Pilots have to choose an autoland landing. He's also saying that autoland tends to land a little bit on the harder side, which apparently is true now. No, genuinely, though, I'm really not used to doing autoland landings, as you could just see. I was like barely able to <laughs> handle that land. That was really bad. Maybe actually we'll have better luck with something like an Airbus plane. How about this A330 that we have here? That one is known for being able to land smoothly even on the hardest of landings. Oh. Oh, well, uh, let's not try an A330 then. <laughs> Damn. I mean, we really do not have, like, a lack of choice, obviously. Most planes have some sort of auto land or approach feature, even something like a Concorde. But to be honest about the Concorde, I'm not able to use that autopilot properly. It's just very complicated. I mean, look at that cockpit. And it's No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> but a plane that I can imagine to be a little simpler, of course, would be the ERJ-145. Come on. All right, now we'll come aboard the very beautiful ERJ. 145 and well um, right now I've managed to turn on the autopilot let's go ahead and put down the landing gear make everything ready and see how smooth this plane is about to land itself well I guess our only job now is to uh, go ahead and uh, get outside of the plane get on maybe onto this runway here and watch the landing from the outside and hope that everything goes well we're actually looking pretty good so far a lot better than the 737 did in the intro okay let's see how's this landing gonna go all right, that's been a pretty wasted landing as well. But honestly, this was a lot, lot better than the 737 landed. At least here, we touched down properly. Maybe a little bit very much on the hard side, 800 feet per minute. Uh, but I think at 1.06 G, this may or may not be a survivable landing for a plane. Which is kind of the point of landing a plane. Yeah, that is a little bit very much on the hard side. Uh, no, this was uh, really not particularly good. Uh, but the other A is actually the thing with auto land. All right, then. Let's maybe step up the game and try an A319 that we're in right now. To be quite honest, I'm very much sure that we're going to be able to get this plane smoothly landed by the autopilot here because this is quite a bit more straightforward. There we go. It's already following here the center line. Now, as we can hear, well, we hear nothing. This is another plane that does not have sound. What's wrong with all these developers? Come on, why is, why is my video showing up up here? I don't know. And we are starting to actually align here on the glide slope. We're look looking good on the vertical track as well. Let's go ahead and then turn on the apron mode, the approach mode, which I hope it works. And it does. I think it's going to follow this now perfectly fine. Let's now turn the second autopilot on as well, which is, I guess, needed for the autopilot to land the plane, especially on an A320. Um, and let's see. I think this will work fine. As you can see, this is a Cat 3 approach. It's 
actually aligned everything. Uh, this is actually the first plane that gets it very right. See, the A320 has always been the king of auto land, actually. Which again, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, <laughs> let's maybe uh, try some conditions that auto land was made for, May like bad visibility. Let's get some clouds in here, some very bad fog, changed weather, and things are about to look a lot different. Here we go, worse and worse visibility coming in. Meanwhile, actually, we are coming in nicely for our landing, and I almost forgot to do the landing gear part. See, this is something that the autopilot cannot do, obviously, and that is put down the landing gear, because after all, we are still the one that operates the plane, and I also forgot flaps. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the autopilot is really mad now, but uh, we're looking good. This is some weird weather here. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Alright, let's just check out how smoothly the autopilot is gonna land this plane down here at Los Angeles. Come on, you can do it. Okay, really, let's make a really proper rating. Now, what I can already tell us, pause this for a second, we're way too la late on the landing. I mean, not really that late, but, you know, as you can see, we're behind the touchdown zone, which is not optimal, but let's just come in here and see how this worked. There we oh. Okay, that's been a really, really smooth one. Honestly, and the, as you can see, the reverse thrust has come out as well. Plane is actually stopping. Damn, that has gone a lot, lot better than I would have thought. That is really, really nice. Maybe we want to step up the game here in another plane made by Airbus. How about an A350? Now, when it comes to auto land, this plane is really, really hardcore, honestly, because this one can actually even do a, like a autopilot takeoff, which we're not gonna, I mean, come on, that would be too much. All right, A350. Here we are. Now, what beautiful sound do I hear? Yes, that's the sound of a jet engine. We finally have a plane that has, like, working engines now. Let's go ahead and, um, you know. Now, we're already here on approach, and this plane is, uh, complaining about a lot of stuff. Come on, calm down a little bit here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not like we're about to crash, dude. All right. Turn on the approach mode, because we can already do that, as you can see. Uh, we're perfectly aligned on the center line and also on the glide slope. We're coming in quite well. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this plane landed. Well, having this plane landed, I should say. Let's go ahead and put the speed to like 140 knots, which is going to be fine for something like an A350. And we're coming in quite much, actually. Let's go ahead and put down the landing gear and the spoilers and everything. And I don't know. Let's just see how this plane is going to land. And please shut up. Why is the autopilot alert always going on? Why is it always complaining, this plane here? Okay, you see, as always, the Airbus planes are a little bit more straightforward and simpler when it comes to the systems and all that stuff, apparently. You know, they just work, uh, which, you know, Boeing planes don't sometimes. Uh, or maybe I'm just too dumb, honestly. Now, I cannot get rid of the autopilot alert. Like, I cannot... Okay, now it's gone. Perfect. So let's concentrate on watching this landing, because that's all we're going to do. Come on, let's give this a chance, see how hard the auto land is going to actually be. Be. Now it's time for a good flare there. We're a little late again behind the touchdown zone, the two bars, but... We have an actual touchdown, a pretty good one. And there we go, the Rolls-Royce engines have deployed its reverse thrust. Actually, this has been a very good landing as well so far. Wow, I've been really surprised by the A350 working out pretty well. Huh? And, oh no, wait. Oh. Oh, that hasn't gone very well. Uh, maybe I was the one who forgot to set the brakes again, which are, like, right here? Um, oh, damn, we've definitely now died. But that's one of their story, as always. Okay, so what is he talking about with the bad landings of Airbus planes? I really do not see that. All right, though, but we're, as you can see, back in the 737, a plane that didn't work on the last time that well. Here we're now in another uh, version of the 737, basically another add-on, because uh, this is the default 737 that comes with the X-Plane. Um, I think, honestly, that works quite a bit better now. Um, so let's just check out whether we're able to do somewhat of a good landing in this plane. Turn on the approach mode, turn on the second autopilot. There we go, now both autopilots are activated, just, you know, with the Airbus planes uh, to do the auto landing and hope that this works, come on. All right, everything else though, is ready. Let's go ahead and slow down on the speed, get this plane very nicely slow, and actually we're coming in a lot better than all the other planes so far. Maybe, you know what, let's actually make this a little spicier by, you know, getting some night time in here. Yes, this is what the flight simulator looks like at night. Oh, well, it looks like a city at night. I don't know. <laughs> now, landing gear's coming down. Let's make this all ready. Actually, you know what? Night sucks. Let's go ahead and go back. What kind of is everyone? Let's go ahead and turn on the auto brake. So I think everything should be set up perfectly fine for a nice landing here with the autopilot. Alright, 200 above ground. Come on, you can do it, autopilot. And now coming in for a landing. We're behind the touchdown zone again, but, you know, this is a long runway. We don't really care. Okay, now a landing. Come on, you can do it. 
Okay, that's been an interesting landing there for sure. I mean, for some reason, the reverse thrust came out in midair. Uh, very interesting one. And I guess we're stopping, though. That's a good thing. All right, that's uh, gone pretty well, hasn't it? All right, you know what? <laughs> that was all right. Um, really, auto land is nice for helping the plane down uh, to the runway. And, well, you know, as you can see, you can, with a simple press of, like, a view buttons, depending on the plane, even a passenger would be able to land a plane just fine, which is good. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to all my members, especially the A380 members, Government Pizza, Riley Preston, Thomas Roach, Finian M, Larry Lama, No You, Philip Schneider, Leo, Mark Helbling, Great Grandpa John, Toby Cook, very much appreciated, uh, British Scherzer 1, Deload, YT, Moritz Wellhausen, Jackson Hawker, uh, Joan Matute, Darcy Hunkin, and Matt Atorno.